Uh, welcome everyone to this very special evening to celebrate such an incredibly, uh, uh, beautifully, brilliantly made, important television show. I'm so happy that I got to see it throughout the week. I got to see only two episodes, but a little bit more than you guys got to see it. And it's just- Stop showing off. I know, <laughs> I got the preview, but um, just brilliant. And uh, also, um, Sir Lenny, how often do, would you like Sir every time? No. Okay, good. <laughs> it might get weird. My house, one and two times, and then you got to do the recycling. <laughs> Okay, all right, first one, Sir Lenny Henry. First TV drama series that you've actually written and created, first time, because of course, there've been so many other things that I thought you had done this before, but not in this way and not actually creation and writing. I've been in loads of things and I've had ideas that have been taken the full course, but this is the first thing I've written and created uh, with the help of all these fantastic people involved. Yeah. And um, it's been a lovely thing actually to, to sit and, I, I, Russell T Davis was my mentor He's a friend of mine and he sat with me and heard all the ideas and laughed when it was funny and didn't laugh when it wasn't and just said, why don't you just lose that bit and move to the next bit? Right. He was wonderful. And so um, working with Charles and Yero and Darcy and everybody at Tiger, all of these people helped to shape it into something that was, every so often you'd watch a, an edit and go, well, that's, that feels like my brain on the screen. So, right. And it's all based on my parents and my mum's and my dad's and my uncle's stories and everybody else. And actually, as you go down the line, you start to think, this is not just my story, this is all of our stories. In fact, absolutely, absolutely. And I'm so pleased that you did get those stories. I mean, were the, are these stories from just memory? Or did you actually make sure you wrote some of the things that your parents and family told you? My mom didn't tell me anything until she was on her deathbed. It's, yeah, they don't, they keep it <laughs> Come here, everyone, side. tell you something. <laughs> Finally, it's- Now! Yeah. I'm gonna need a pen and a pad, or a real hope I won't tell you this. My uncles told me stuff, and my auntie took my auntie pill, made me join the library, told me stuff. Wow, that's and, pretty. Um, and actually, lots of people. I talked to Angela Ferreira's mom and dad. I talked to people's parents. Because I remember talking to Kwasi, uh, Kwame and uh, Roy Williams, and they basically said, you, you better start talking to your mom and dad, you know, and your aunties and uncles, because they're not going to be here for long. And they come here when streets was cold, mm -hmm. and when they had them signs in the windows. And it's really important to get those stories. I've never really seen this on the telly, so I wanted to try and do an epic, think about how to do it in an epic way on the money. Well, absolutely, I mean, uh, thank you ITV. And, thank you and, ITV. Thank you. Giving us the You budget. give us one and two pounds. <laughs> no, and budget. we did the best we could. <laughs> thank you, Pally. No, got the budget you deserve, I hope, because it looks it looks fantastic. And and of course, you sort of Yara and Charles, you split the series, so you do the first two, and then yeah. you do the next, the following episodes. Um, how how did you feel approaching work that you knew was so personal to Lenny? You want to go first? I mean, Lenny was really open at the beginning to be like, "This is our whole thing. This is a very collaborative thing." And also, you you know, you've said this is the stories you know based upon, but also it's fictional in terms yeah, yeah. of. Um, it had to be fictional because my family is very litigious. Right, exactly. <laughs> Suing you all over the place. You sue me backside, yes. <laughs> What's that? You put that in there. <laughs> so just trying to build a world that really felt very universal. Um, and we really wanted to make a show that, although it's set in 1957, it is very contemporary. I mean, you, you watch it. I mean, when I was approached for this, I thought, oh, period drama. Am I going to have to do a stuffy thing and no we just had a lot of fun with it we had a lot of modern references as well yeah what were those modern references um for my episodes i think we talked about if bill street could talk and yeah. also um well not so modern but we spoke about a steven spielberg film from the 70s and like thrillers and um without too many spoilers like the hand that rocks the cradle kind of scary thing oh god i, I know you, you never away. know where but you, no, don't, but I know you don't know where it's going could be anywhere yeah no, I know what you're talking about. Right? <laughs> well, <then. laughs> that creepy bit. Um, and Benjamin, the music in this, it, I mean, what I feel like must have been a real joy, of course, the score and then just the tunes. Um, but uh, what was that research process for you like? I mean, I'm sure it was a really great time. Yeah, yeah, no, it's a great time. I mean, it's, it's interesting delving into music from that time from the Caribbean. Because mm -hmm. I think everybody knows about music from a little bit later, sort of 60s, 70s, everybody understands what the sound of the Caribbean was. But um, going back a little bit further, you have to do, you have to delve quite a lot deeper to try and find what was the folk music from Jamaica, what was the folk music from yeah. Trinidad and, what, and all the different places, you know, so... 
it was yeah really good fun really good. how important were details throughout this whole um process because i mean like every episode i just feel like there was because that's the thing you think you've seen this story before because there is more that we know now but no we, we haven't seen this on television in this way and i realized i've never thought about what the boat insides <laughs> looked like do you know what i mean just little things like that how did you start to do the research for production design and how it would all look and feel? Well, I, I came to it with a great amount of ignorance, shamefully, mm. and I wanted to find out a lot about it, so I did a lot of things simultaneously. Talking to Lenny was obviously the most important, doing a lot of book research, picture research, video uh, films that still exist. But for me, the two best things were two <coughs> women who we met, Carmen Munro, who came over in 51, who told us wonderful stories about yes. her arrival, going to work in a library in Tooting, where during the lunch hour she would rip out the pages of racist books and take them home and burn them in the back garden. Come on, come on. Go on, come on. That's good. So, uh, and another lady who went to Scotland to be a nurse and, and just talking to people and seeing their strength even now when asked, how apprehensive were you? How nervous were you? We just got on with it. Mm. And they were 19. That's the thing. Everybody was really, you know, yeah. when we think about our parents, we just think, oh, well, you know, we think of them as this age, but actually they were all really young. Mm. Everybody was young when they came over here, looking for work and trying to be a nurse and stuff. They were our age. Well, but. I think that's what I loved about the series because my, my um, I, I showed a little bit to my grandmother and she was like, oh, how wonderful that they're, te they're telling our story. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I realized that I, even to this day, I still put her at 86 in the position of, we got the, I was in it, she was a teacher, mm -hmm. a long time in Suffolk. 60s, 70s, 80s, not an easy time. Only black women in the in the country. And just for, to see it, sorry, not in the country, in Suffolk, where she was working. It's the same now. And to just, yeah, well, quite. <laughs> <laughs> quite. If only, if only we could say how much you it's changed. You see a black person walking down the street <laughs> yeah, in Suffolk, like, it's like, usually me. Yeah. <laughs> Take some sort of talk. Um, but that's but that's what I thought was so beautiful that that we're learning about. Uh, I, you know, you think of things in such a vague term sometimes, or a general term, and it's like these are the these are young girls and boys who especially when she leaves her family you, you hear that story so much but you don't think about the heartbreak of a woman leaving her children to come to another country can we talk about this cast actually brilliant beautiful <laughs> banging new fresh talent right um how did you find this saffron cooper who is uh, chantrell yeah. and then yasmin bello uh, and then Rochelle Neal in the middle. Where, where, how did you start this process? Was it important to you to find young actors that hadn't done loads yet? It was, we, we sort of were diverted down a Hollywood route for about 10 minutes, but we wanted to make people <laughs> stars, and I think they will be. Yes. And it was a case of Rochelle walking in and claiming the part outright in her first audition. They all had about four callbacks, yeah. but I wrote to Tiger and said we found Leah immediately after her audition. With the others, we took a long time, but we found the right people, and it's just a wonderful process matching them up and seeing who works with whom. Mm. And uh, then they grew, visibly grew on set, didn't they? It's they all fantastic. Have, yeah. I must also mention Javon Prince. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Javon yeah. Prince, Come on, man. Javon. Come on. Absolutely brilliant. Absolutely. And heartbreaking in it, and I've only ever seen him do comedy. Well, yeah. he's, well he gets he's, to do comedy yeah. and tragedy in this, and he's, he's absolutely lovely, and he, he adds so much to scenes when he's in them. There's so much more to come. You, I can't wait for you to see it. He's, they're all great. And, mm. and Saffron gets to dance and move and, and they all get to crack gags, but they all get to break our hearts too. Yes. And that's what counts for me. And I was going to say, in the process of making this, Lenny, how important was it for you to make sure that the light and the dark were shown? Well, it, it's not all, you know, slavery and stuff, you know. I think it's important to understand that when you, when you come to a country like this, if you haven't got a sense of humour, you're going to dead. Mm -hmm. You need to be able to laugh at stuff because it's tough out here in them streets. And I remember my mum talking about people, kids chasing down the street and asking her where her tail was and being on the, I remember being on the bus with my mum and people rubbing my head and saying, oh, it's just like, oh, it's just lovely, isn't it, like carpet? And if you, and if you can't laugh at that shit, yeah, you're not yeah, going to... Yeah. <laughs> so I, I think to balance the humour and the sadness of leaving Jamaica behind, why did you leave? It was sunny over there. You know, to, to kind of balance the humour and the tragedy is really, really important. Yeah. And I think with the help of these wonderful people and all of the amazing people who helped to put it together, we found a balance. It was great to go on the set, actually. Quite a diverse set. Oh, yes. I now, hope we get to see some pictures. Yeah, I, well, I heard this, that it was quite important for you all to have a diverse set. And I mean, that's something that still has to be thought of and is, isn't just a given. Um, but how did it feel? What did that bring in the end? To, to the days on set. Great, wasn't it? Yeah. 
Yeah. Everybody walked on set and went, wow! <laughs> I've never been on a set like this before. Yeah. There's chicken and rice at the catering place. No, please. no, wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Diverse set and great catering. It was really pretty good. It was pretty good catering, I'd say. Nice. Right, then I've done this gungu piece, is that right? <laughs> Have some gungu peas, they're delicious. <laughs> We've got Joe Lowe for ice today. <laughs> Paul McHugh. It was great, the yeah, catering no, was great. Tried, tried. But what, I don't know if you heard this, but people kept saying to me, this is my mum's story. Yeah, oh, yeah. This, is my, yeah. this is my uncle's story, yeah. this is my story. Absolutely, I was gonna ask, what, what stories did it bring out for all of you um, while, uh, within your own personal mm. histories? Because mine was just coming yeah. over and over again. What, what, what did it bring up for you while making this? I think just going back to just the diverse um, crew and heads of departments, I just implore all productions to just like get their beat together and do this because it just makes things better. Um, the editor for my blog, Anil Griffin, who I would hire for absolutely everything, read the script and was like, this reminds me of my grandparents' story in the Mauritius and coming over here and it's like we're moving to Scotland and it's it's about family and heart and love. And I think about my granddad who then um, came to, I think he went to Manchester Uni first in the 50s as, uh, you know, a scholar but was also sweeping at night. Yeah. And I just think about how, again, that was a young person, not like an old man. What was that like being, you know, a bit more north than Dudley? But this is just what, such a what, what, amazing story. Yeah, which island did he come from? My granddad's Jamaican, uh, not Jamaican, Nigerian, sorry. Oh, right, so he's, okay. so he's not even, so I think about yeah. when we look at a lot of people that came over, which we'll see, you know, in the, the series, it's really important for you allyship, um, that there are so many different backgrounds going through lots of different things, living in harmony and maybe not as well. So I think, What's cool about this show is it's also a melting pot of of life outside of London, which I think is really interesting because I don't really think I've seen that that much um, on TV when we look at stories with with black characters, or Asian characters. That's it. You think they're all coming to London? They're going to Boreham Wood and Dudley. I was yeah. like, oh, of course they are. Right. And so, how did you get into the research of, of sort of depicting those places and what it would be like for black people at that time there? Lots of books are really, really great, but also um, BFI archives have a lot of really cool things. Um, yeah, BFI. Yeah, yeah. BFI! Have a look! Um, watching interviews, news, newspaper clippings, I did um, an adaptation of The Lonely Londoners, and that also really kind of like um, woke me up to like the humour of coming to a new place and how it is actually completely like fish out of water. Um, and just really small things that we would think are mundane are actually really huge when you see them for the first time. And again, the nervousness of moving to a new place. And yes, you want a better life, but at the same time, we'll see with some of the characters, maybe their lives, um, quote unquote, back home, are um, were very different to other people's lives back home. And how do they feel now settling in, in, in England um, and missing things and, and, and thinking actually, I was promised something, but it's this. Yeah, absolutely. I wanted to talk about that, the psychological, I'm sorry, I have to swear, yeah. mind fuck of coming here. And everything that you've been taught is a lie, not to mention everything that you've been taught about COVID. I'm talking about, uh, you know, sort of um, praying to the gods of England for your whole life, like my grandmother and all my, yeah. um, uh, my great aunts and great uncles did. And then to come here, not only feel tricked, but feel like everything you ever knew made no sense at all. So I thought- The fact that they didn't, people didn't know you, mum, Mum was really hurt that they didn't know about yeah. Jamaica. Right, yeah. They didn't know where it was from. They didn't know that there were other Caribbean islands either. They didn't know about the food. It was, you couldn't get seasoning. It was, she, she was vexed about a lot of yeah. things. Like, not even a little piece of seasoning. Right. <laughs> so what did, what did, do you remember from the stories what they did? I mean, that's quite a serious issue to come and be, like the food is taste, taste, tasteless. Different. Tastes different. And Everything is chips. Everything chip is, and chip. Yeah, chip and chip. Egg and chip, ham and chip, chip and chip. <laughs> so true though. That's all the meat, you know, Charles, you know this. All the meat is chip and chip. <laughs> what wrong with them? <laughs> What's wrong with these like people? I like Chantrell was looking forward to that though. She was like fish and chips. Well, Chantrell, Chantrell mm. is, loves the movies and right. she's seen a bigger world. She's seen Harry Belafonte and mm. Dorothy Dandridge and, and Lena Horne in movies. And she's, like a lot of Caribbeans, she'd seen these things and she's gone, I'm going to go to England and I can sing and I can, I can remember lines. I'm going to be an actor. And she has no idea what will face her when she comes. You'll see in the series no, I mean, what I it will be like for her. 
because even though she she feels like she's got a fair skin pass, they still don't mm. want her, and it's heartbreaking. Yeah. Um, and I remember that we I was talking to somebody from uh, Britbox, who's one of the sponsors of the show, and they were talking about the relatability of the show, and I said anybody who has moved from this place to come to that place for any reason will understand what we're talking about here. Yes. Because it's about migration, yeah. it's about starting a new life, it's about your kids, it's about the heartache, it's about overcoming yeah. obst obstacles to do better than you were doing back home. They try, they even do it, they're still doing it now. Mm -hmm. Try and find somewhere better, to better than back home where there was war and starvation and poverty. Can please God let it be better? And like you say, when they get here, it's different. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's not quite what you were told it was going to be. Yeah. But you're going to try and make a go of it because what else are you going to do? Well, this is it because then of course, uh, yeah, the episode we've all seen it at the party, and I was like, oh, that's what we did. We united and we raved. <laughs> and I wanted to know, Benjamin, with the music, how did you get really specific with the tunes that you were going to have at that party? Because that's a, that you got to get that yeah. right. <laughs> well, I wasn't always in charge of what, what songs were chosen. <laughs> oh, okay. um, I, I approved though. Very, okay. yeah, nice, choices, approved. nice choices. But yeah, I mean, I guess in terms of the other music in the shows, uh, the other music in the show is just kind of telling the story, all everything we've been talking about. Mm -hmm. It's trying to talk about all of the psychological aspects. It's trying to talk about, you know, what did they face when they arrived in... Um, Shepherd's Bush, no, where is Notting it? Hill. Notting Hill. Mm -hmm. And yeah. nobody liked them. They didn't, nobody wanted them there. So that, you know, I think that was an interesting thing for me to try and be like, you know, what is it that's going on in their heads? Yeah. yeah. It's amazing how each section of the process, the editing, the, the music, the sound design, the, it, when each one, when you go to watch the edits and it's rough, but every time a layer is added on, it becomes more... Mm. has more substance and you kind of you feel it more it's, it's an amazing thing well it's like you're saying about stories i mean the, the story of the of the young kids is, is basically the story of my mum so right. she was one of the kids who left left in jamaica and then was brought to the uk later on she stayed with her grandma and was brought to the uk later on so it's there's so many parallels in you know in everybody's stories here so i think i think in looking at it i can kind of relate to you know what's going on there. i was really moved by leah leaving the children behind mm. and i read a brilliant book by elise Elise Dodgson called Motherland and uh, there's a section about what parents said to their children before they left and there was one most I'm just going in, I'm just going to the shop mm. and I'll be back in a minute mm. she never came back mm. Mm. and uh, so cool. she had to live with her gran mm. people people just left they had, and the tear from their children was such that they just had to say anything and get the hell out of the house otherwise they'd never leave because you, your your mum experienced this as well when your siblings left and then you were born in this country i was born in this country yeah and see i even read that and never even thought about the heartbreak within it i just thought about the that's the way things wereness of it and this is the first time i've really thought about that seymour, did, seymour didn't come over till 64. so you had to earn money to send for them mm. peace peace yeah. One by one. One by one. And it was it must have been horrible. Because mm. I believe my great my grandmother was <laughs> tough. strict. Tough. <laughs> she was a tough I believe one. she was strict, so yes. they, they were glad to get out of there in the end. And I just want to talk about the clothes. Um, everyone looks great. Um, and I, you know, I mean, the, the whole Sunday best thing is so important because I think that's also one of the most heartbreaking things. The first scene where everyone really is in their Sunday best to come and present themselves to with to travel, right? To travel for Church two weeks clothes. on a boat, um, but to show to come and to show their pride. And and I think that's something that as black people we still really is it runs within us. But how was the detail for you for the research of like the clothes they were going to wear, the, the way they did their hair, the makeup, the hair is important. Yeah, very, mm -hmm. very. And we did obviously a lot of picture research. We had all the Windrush photos, which were nine years previous to this. So we could start there and move forwards in, in the next decade. Um, but it was all very important. It's all accurate. Yeah. I think so. The hot yeah. comb. Yep. Yeah. Remember the hot comb? Yep. Yeah. Put it on the fire. Yeah. Put it on the paraffin lamp till it's so, white hot. So, so unbelievable. And then straighten your head. <laughs> Unbelievable if you think about it. Amazing. I, I think a lot of research went yeah. on. Yeah. We read everything. We looked at everything. Um, um, and then when they get here, everyone's very badly dressed and, mm. and very badly behaved. Well, quite. No manners. Well, quite. And I think um, that was, was so, my Uncle John told me this was, this was, he said we were just all so confused, yeah. so confused for so long. Um, there is a moment in, in, in the episode that, um, that everyone in this room won't have seen yet, but it's <clears> a moment of kindness. And um, as I said, my grandmother was a teacher. She came from Antigua. 
Um, and the <clears throat> small school that she worked at in Suffolk, there just happened to be a really kind, really open, she might, as my nan said, not prejudiced head for 20 years. And then the last five years, someone who was prejudiced came in and her whole teaching career changed. Um, but that act of kindness changed my grandma's life in this country. And there is a moment where we have a, a moment of kindness after really nothing going at all well for, for, for our group of people. Do you think that's why so many of our people stayed for those moments of kindness and those moments of people welcoming us in? Not, not many, but just the moments that they were there. I think you, you, that's how you survive, isn't it? You yeah. live for kindness. You're getting over, you're overcoming obstacles, but every so often when somebody says a nice thing or encourages you, it makes you think, actually, it's not so bad. So I wanted to put that in because my mum's life was like that. Mm. She borrowed money from Rita at the shop. Yeah. And um, everything was on, everything was on, to, they call it trust, we trust food. Mm -hmm. So it was, there, there were acts of kindness that meant that we could survive in this country. Yeah. And, and also, also by the end of the second episode, there's the beginnings of a community, yeah. a new family, there's people in the street, people at the factory, and you begin to see that they may be able to make their lives work here. Yeah, by looking after each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's, there's one other thing that comes across here when they decide to stay, and that's just their, their strength, their yeah. mental yeah. strength. I think it's amazing, and I think this, mm. it's, a, it's a beautiful thing to see in the in this series that the the three women just really just deciding to make the best of it and have each other's yeah. backs. Yeah. Have each other's back, yeah. Yeah. I mean, everybody knows there's a network of women making cakes, wedding dresses, dresses, mm. looking after each other, looking after each other's children when necessary. Mm. That was what it was like in the Midlands, and um, I'm sure it was like that down here too. That's how I was raised in Lavender Grove in the eighties. So. Dumped, yeah. yeah. just... dumped to people's houses. Yeah, totally. Miss Murphy, me, I gotta leave Mikita here for a one and two. <laughs> I'll be back in a week. <laughs> Is that my mum? <laughs> <laughs> You're there That's eating, going, a week? A week? But it's, people looked after each other. They really watched out for each yeah. other. And I think that's something, there is so much love in this series as, as, the, as well. That moment of kindness, I just wept. I was like, oh God, okay, that's what, there were moments where there was, there was love for us. I, I've been very blessed in collaborating with lots of people since 1976, really. And I've always been a good collaborator, but I've never really written anything. I used to make lots of lists and um, not really finish anything. And then I bought a computer and then I started to finish things. And um, I always wanted to tell my story. When I went to do an MA at Royal Holloway, I had six things that I wanted to do and none of them were this. And I wrote scripts and none of them were any good. And then I kept writing, kept writing, kept writing and started to get better. And before this, there were a few disappointments. And I went to Russell T. Davis and I said, because he's a friend, and I said, will you just talk me through what happens when you're writing this stuff and kind of will you listen to my ideas? And he said, yes, that was just before lockdown. And um, he encouraged me to just glue my backside to the seat and finish. And I did. And I, I remembered all the things my mum had told me and my uncle Clifton had told me and, and various people and my sisters. My, my brothers and sisters used to meet up. We had a thing, we have a thing called the siblings where we meet and we talk about everything and eat. And um, all the stories about coming here in the 50s. And I kept thinking, and you're going to have this too, because it's not just my story, no, it's everybody's story. And you'll have stories like this. This is why I get so frustrated when broadcasters and commissioners go, well, we've had that story. No, you haven't. <laughs> You've had one set of stories. You know there's enough stories about us. What about the St. Kitts people? They've got stories. The St. Lucians. You don't think they got, the Guyanese people, you don't think they got stories. There's enough stories. There's so many stories. There's a plethora of stories. And this is mine, but there's more. You wait, there's more. And um, that's what I wanted to embody with this. And I hope we get to do more because there's more stories to tell. I mean, I would love that. I think the thing that attracted me to direct this is that these were like multifaceted women. And I think we all made a conscious decision that this wasn't gonna be a traumatic show, a very woe is me show, that we, we show the hardships, but also the perseverance and the love and the light and the community and having, you know, crushes on people, falling in love and that kind of thing. And I, I feel that's really, really important um, when it comes to commissioning just commissioners in here. Just like there are so many stories that, that we all really want to tell. Um, 
And yes, a lot of them have similarities, but they are so different. And I feel like I really think and pray and hope that this show will be able to, to put that on the map to be like, hi, we hire just, people, yeah. bring new talent in. We don't have to only go to like, like top, um, you know, people that have been in a hundred million pounds films. Like there are so many actors who are just starving for work and that can excel. And you will see that with all of the cast in this. Great, <laughs> great news. A lot of talent out there. For me, for me, it's simply that uh, female characters are much more interesting than male characters. Yeah. Yes, Charles. Yeah. Yeah. Hang on. <laughs> Sell out. No. <laughs> uh, I, I've spent most of my life making shows with female lead characters, and, and they're much more interesting. Mm. I'd like to trace the children and how they grow up because when Mama Gladys in this says, this is big people things, um, I've always wanted to know what big people, I still don't know what big people things are. So I want to trace the children growing up and see them finding out what big people things is. So yeah. Make an anthology as it make were. A, well, well, no, it's just a, in, within the course of the drama, you can, you can weave it through. And I, oh, I think great. things like The Pardoner, yeah. which is a kind of Jamaica, well, Caribbean, and actually... Susu. It's, it's, yeah. susu, it's everything. <laughs> black, okay, I look we, forward to it. Wherever you go, black people do a version of the pardoner. So it's, it's in this, but uh, it's going around. I've never like... had that happen to you. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Well, it says in the script, she's yeah. in the script, in she opens the door, she's yeah. yeah. It is cold, that, but this, yeah. Is, yeah. Yeah. this is what happens to working class people who of colour and actually wherever they're from. Mm. It's, it's uh, if you're the help, that's how you get treated. Yeah. Wait, wait till you see episode two. Yeah. Wait until you see episode two. Maybe subtle. Maybe subtle. Maybe subtle is the wrong No, it wasn't word. subtle at all, was no. it? It's not subtle. No. It's definitely, it wasn't subtle. It's definitely a You're young, don't worry about it. You're young. <laughs> You got things to experience later on yeah. in your life. I, I, I get, I get what you're yeah. saying, but yeah. it's not subtle, and you'll see as it goes on how unsubtle people used to be. Yeah, yeah. I think and what's, what's, interesting, what's interesting is, as well, is that it's this is not just a, a television show for five Jamaican people in the Midlands. It's for everybody. Yeah. This happened to all of us: black, white, brown, whatever. Mm. And it's for us and our parents and our grandparents to go. Yeah, that's what it was like. And you know, yeah, man, the same thing's happening now. So it's important to mark this and to go, God, it's not really changed. And Lenny said to me, whatever you put in, whatever you have people shout, whatever you have people do, it is nothing to what actually happened every day. Yes, yeah. that's what my grandma says as well. Yeah. So, yeah, is that your mum? It's my stepmom. Yeah. <laughs> is it your stepmom? <laughs> Masquerading as a, just a normal That's person hilarious. with a question. I'm just a normal person yeah, in the just... audience. Tell me, when are you coming to visit again? <laughs> <laughs> because it's a long time since I see you. <laughs> I bring think money next time. I think, I, I think it's a really, 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 really good question. It's a good question. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good question. <laughs> Best question of the night. And the final one. So, yeah. well, how many times have we got? No, no. Um, I had so much inspiration from these guys. I've got to say, I'm not going to give them all the credit, but I definitely had a lot of inspiration. And the, the collaboration that happened within all the teaming and, and Darcy as well was really, really special. Um, I, I arrive at the point when this is already all filmed. They've, all the scripts are written, it's all filmed. They've had their hair done, the makeup done and everything. So I get to look at it and just kind of try and absorb, absorb that and take it all in and try and then bring some music out. And you went out. everywhere as well. You dip and yeah. fall back, Calypso, a bit of reggae, a <laughs> yeah. bit of ska, a bit of romantic classical. You went everywhere and I, I really applaud you for it because yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Needs it all. Yeah. She's amazing. We, I know we have to wrap up, but like we spent a lot of time in his studio in South London. You know, loads of deliveroos. <laughs> and we, like, you just have done a very, very cool job because tracking, moving, coming to England, all of the different themes, I think. Yeah. The different moods. Yeah. 
it, yeah. it really... Makes and it helps to underscore emotion as well and, and move us, not in a kind of sledgehammer way, but yeah. it really just gently moves us and makes us, makes us walk. Because the thing is, to make the viewer walk in their shoes, and I think what you do does that. When, when he sent us the first study on, on an audio file, it was a little piano piece which we eventually used in that scene of Leah leaving the kids in Jamaica. And I find it most affecting and, and emotional. And it's just very simple and, and pure. My man's a don. <laughs> My man's a don. I just want to say what an extraordinary job you both did as well. Just, it, it looks beautiful. It really does. And it was all shot in Dudley. Well. Most of, well, some of it was shot in Dudley. Yeah. Have to frame out the sky dishes. It was a brilliant dishes. job. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, I'm so sorry that's all we have time for, but um, panel, thank you for making this important piece of television. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming.